Good Friday. I ponder that phrase every year I hear it. On all accounts, that dark, dark day was not necessarily good for Jesus. Harassed, humiliated, whipped, spat upon, tortured, nailed to wood, raised for all to see, which led to his death. This was not good. However, it was a reality that Jesus faced, and he let happen. He knew for some time that this weird good was going to transpire. In fact, in all of our Gospels, Jesus paves the road to this good by foreshadowing it with his words, with some of his miracles, and that Jesus would die by seemingly good people's hands. Yes, they were seemingly good people. These good people had no idea of Jesus' good. All they knew was what they understood to be good. And so doing Jesus' good was a threat, and as a result, they seemingly, these seemingly good people tried to bury this good. And oh, how they tried, entombing it into darkness. While well, most of us here have heard this story before, we know how it continues. There are so many who do not want to hear this day of good. And so they skip over it. And only want to hear the happy and the joyous part of the story. For Easter is bright and cheerful, and we sing loud praises and dress up in our Sunday best. While there is nothing wrong with that, all of this is our beautiful things on Easter. Yet without the good of this day, there would be no Easter. At Christmas, we hear these words from Isaiah chapter 9, starting with verse 2. Here are these words. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as a joy at the harvest, as people exult with dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. When we hear these words, these are words of a promise that Jesus, our Christ, our Savior, will fulfill in doing the duties and titles and so forth. But while dying on the cross, and this, he will establish all of these words in Isaiah 9. For they're not words that we just sing Christmas carols to, or poetry. They are words that we can look on and say, this is what Jesus is going to do. These are words that I can trust and live by. Indeed, he is the Prince of Peace who brings peace to our life. Truthfully, Jesus is the mighty and wonderful counselor that guides my footsteps in my life. Thankfully, Jesus is our mighty God who is everlasting now and always. Jesus is not giving lip service to these words, these titles, and the promises. He is all of these and so much more. However, we as followers of Christ Jesus need to hear and see and experience this reality that Jesus went through. 
Yes, it was vicious. Yes, it was cruel and difficult to hear at times. But this good turns into God's goodness for us three days later. Nevertheless, see the good of this day. Hear the good of this day. Experience the good of this day, for it was done for you. And to connect you to the one who created you and who now longs to be in complete relationship with you. So we call this day Good Friday. But it means so much more than just good, so let's call it God's Goodness Friday. Where God is seeking to bring you out of deep darkness and into his glorious light. Amen.